My name is Nicole. Um, I deployed in 0405 Operation Iraqi Freedom um, with the 39th Infantry Brigade. I, at the beginning, helped my commander um, run the company as his aide, him and our first sergeant. Um, unfortunately, two weeks in, he got killed in a mortar attack. So um, after that, it was uh, doing 50 cal missions, working in the defect, um, and doing combat lifesaver missions. Right before um, day, right before the sun rose, um, probably like four, three or four in the morning, there was like this really loud explosion. And I mean, it was like so earth shattering. It knocked the wind out of me. And I remember this ton of smoke coming in and it was real, I can't describe, but it was so powerful <clears throat> that everybody kind of knew something had happened. You couldn't even think or rationalize what was going on. And I saw my supply sergeant and you know, he was kind of just blown out. I remember just telling him it was gonna be okay. I was trying to look through my, hold his hand and look through my CLS bag at the same time to see, in my mind, I knew it wasn't anything that I could do. In that moment, I mean, he ended up passing away. And I just remember this feeling of just not, it was just unreal. When I came back from Iraq, I was, um, I got in a position with uh, the governor working with the veteran community in our state. And um, I was going through the motions, what I now know is avoidance. <laughs> um, I was working 24 hours a day, well not 24, like 18 hours a day. I didn't sleep well, I never did. Um, but I just thought it was, it just was, you know? Um, I didn't understand what the anxiety attacks were about, and they didn't get bad until after I became the head of this organization and after I began to get into this work. I could be sitting in a room, like in a staff meeting, and something could happen, a scent could come, a sound, somebody may say a word or something, somebody may make a joke, and I would mentally leave. You know, and I, I mean, I may have looked like I was there, but I wasn't there. I knew those things that made my heart beat faster, made that, that feeling in your pit of your stomach come, um, where I had to just, like, sometimes I would have to stop and just take deep breaths. So I was recognizing what was causing issues, and I just tried to avoid those situations. And I had this one incident where I was holding my daughter, and I kind of had, like, a anxiety attack flashback, and I don't remember like I don't remember if I let her go I don't remember if like and it was the scariest feeling when you're in a position of leadership or when you're helping other people sometimes the hardest thing is to get help for yourself and I kind of had this feeling like people would they saw me as this like rock soldier you came back you know you were a 50 cal gunner the governor's like going around telling people like this is my sarge and she's this and that and it's just like to be vulnerable to that and to acknowledge that, um, it changed how I felt about myself. And I wasn't, I just couldn't get to that point on my own. And so my husband was like, you have got to get some help. I reached out to somebody else I know who's a PhD at the VA, worked in one of the mental health components. And I kind of explained to her where I was. And she was saying that she was glad that I came to her and she um, connected me. She talked to me about cognitive behavioral therapy and she told me about this doctor. Um, and so I contacted her and um, we had our first visit and it went really well. I just began to like notice differences. Um, I began to notice that I was a little bit stronger in handling stuff. Um, I knew how to figure out different things and I didn't feel like I was in it alone. I have a female support group um, that it's about three of them that are military sexual trauma um, and it's about four of us that are um, combat. That helps um, because we kind of made this personal commitment to one another and it was weird how we all connected that we um, were going to be different in how we handled it and how we process it. We know ourselves and we know when something is wrong, we know um, sometimes to what extent it's wrong, and it's just how we approach what to do with that information that we have. Things are better today um, because I feel more in control. Um, I'm not afraid of um, the future as it relates to my mental health. Um, there's some fear there, but not nearly as much fear. I mean, I feel like I'm in control of the situation.